Barakatha Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Rakakwadash. I typed in Chariot Cloud <clears throat> on YouTube and some interesting things came up. All right. For example, on CNN, it says video captures flying objects that officials can't explain. Let's click on that. If you're feeling sluggish, bloated around the waist, or even just plain backed up, and you're ready to flush out that extra 5 to 20. In Colorado and Nebraska. That is so creepy. A mystery in the night sky. What some say are drones, lots of them, but no one seems to know from where or why. That little dot right there. Jennifer Rollins was visiting family in Yuma County the day after Christmas when she spotted the flying objects, capturing this one on camera. The chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah cannot be hid. Now, there's another video that says Russell Crowe claims he spotted a UFO. Aaron Burnett out front. Weeknights at 7, only on CNN. That there has been another UFO sighting, this time by Russell Crowe. The Academy Award winning actor has posted this video on YouTube. What? What did that thing just appear? Whoa. Whoa. According to the actor, the time lapse footage shows a UFO flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens in Sydney, Australia. Crowe joins a growing. Right. But we're in the end now. So Yahweh Shah, he's manifesting himself to the earth. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah are manifesting themselves to the earth, man. And of course, you got videos by the brothers, you know, different brothers, whether they're in Great Millstone or they follow Great Millstone. Bro put up a video, Chariot Hides Above a Cloud in Brazil. Click on that. You can see that. All right. Now, scripts speak about the clouds of heaven, but we know that they're not actual clouds. Some more videos. All right. Scientists explain strange lights in the sky, which they can't explain it through the spirit. Only the prophets can explain it. And it's put up by GMS North Carolina 777 Big Chariot in a Cloud. <clears throat> Beautiful. Also, I was looking at videos by this brother here, GMS Get This Work, Manatazaki Howarder. Now, he put up a video entitled ISS Catches Small Chariots Docking with Larger Ship Before Cutting Feed. As you can see, the Heavenly Father has all types of chariots, man. Okay. Brother put up another video right here. And the reason why I'm showing these vids, you know, just clicking on them real quick is because the Lord is coming back in a very phenomenal fashion, man. OK, and it's not just going to be one ship. It's going to be many ships that is going to be Yahweh Shah's main ship. Don't get me wrong. 
like Elder Pastor Hart said, we we might be delivered in one ship, Lord willing. You know, so there is going to be that one ship, but also the Lord is coming with an innumerable, innumerable company of angels, like it tells you in Hebrews. Okay. It looks like a diamond surrounded by a wheel with rainbow colors, man. Okay. Bro, the Lord is out of this world and, and these chariots are pure power. All right. I'm going to get into this lesson. Lord willing, you're edified. Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to our power, Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahusha, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God. His real name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew is Yahweh, which means He is, He to be, He exists. Bahasham means in the name in ancient Hebrew. Yahusha is the name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. The true name of the Messiah. The son of Yahweh is Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. He saves, he is salvation. Bahasham means in the name. Rechakwadash is the Holy Spirit. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Second Ezra in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass after the seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Right, now let's get some clarity, which we know what this is talking about for you brothers that have been in the faith, that are in the faith, okay? And you go over the scripture or these scriptures all the time. In particular, this chapter right here, second Edges chapter 13. We know what this is going into. All right. But the Lord gives us other pieces of information. For example, other Bibles that help explain it more plainly. OK, so let's read verse three again. And I beheld and lo, lo means look that man. Who is that man? That man is the Messiah. He's classified as that man. Yahweh Shai, he's that dude. All right, that's the most important man in existence. In existence under his heavenly father. All right, so that man. All right, this high value male. Okay. That man, wax strong. The word wax means to grow. So he grew strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. You know, which is all creation trembling. But in particular, the people that are going to attempt to fight. All right. They're going to fight against Yahweh Shai and the heavenly hosts. But dealing with that man wax strong with thousands of heaven. Now I have this book right here. The Apocrypha. Revised version. Okay. The Apocrypha translated out of the Greek and Latin tongues, which ultimately it goes back to the Hebrew. Okay. So, yeah, and, and it says it was printed by Cambridge at the University Press, 1895. All right. Now, it says printed for the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. 
all right, which are very prominent universities. All right. So you see it's an older book, which the KJV is older. All right. But we're going to go to that same chapter and that same verse and get the explanation of it, which we know what it is, but we're going to get it anyway. All right. For more understanding. Second Esdras and the Apocrypha, the revised version, chapter 13, verse 3. And I beheld and lo, this wind caused to come up from the midst of the sea, as it were, the likeness of a man. <coughs> and we know who that man is. Okay, when it's speaking about the sea, he came from the midst of the sea. It's talking about outer space. Okay. Like they told you in, um, what was that? War of the Worlds starring Tom Cruise. When um, Morgan Freeman was narrating, he said beyond the gulf of space. Because space is like unto the waters. It is waters. It's just waters outside of our atmosphere. Okay. But it says, and I beheld and lo. That man flew with the clouds of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Right, because once again, the armies of the earth are going to fight the Messiah and the holy angels. Now, at first I said attempt because it's really not a fight. You know, <clears throat> they're going to get blasted out of the sky. That's why Yahweh Shah said he beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. It's going to be quick, you know. Yahweh shot and holy angels destroying Esau and the armies of the earth, okay? But yeah, it says, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Right here it says, that man flew with the clouds of heaven. Right, so we have an understanding. And for that word, uh, wax, for wax, it actually says grow or grew strong, has grew strong. So, yeah, I want to go into this, man, because we're living in a time where Yahweh Shai is really going to make himself known. Now, he's already doing it by way of the holy angels appearing because they're an extension of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's power. But eventually, and it's not going to be long, but after a while, the Messiah himself is going to show up. Okay. And he's coming back to kick ass, man. It tells you in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. All right. But the point is, <coughs> he waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, meaning he's coming with the clouds of heaven, which those are the vehicles of the heavens. All right. The, the vehicles of the spirit world. OK. And Esau cannot fight them. And they have a dual purpose. OK. OK. Now, when you read this in 2nd Edges 13, it's dealing with Yahweh Shai destroying, okay? And also saving too, okay? When you keep reading, where it says, you know, some came to him. He gathered another peaceable multitude, you know? So the chariots deal with salvation and destruction. It goes to the uh, destruction first, but then it goes to the salvation, all right? <clears throat> But to get another example of the salvation, a scripture that we know, but I'm going to read it anyway. All right. This is in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. Begin at 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, meaning after Jacob's trouble, in particular, after the MOB, after the Revelation 13 and 16, to 18 come to pass. We know what that is. The chip. The mandatory microchip. After that comes to pass. Along with all the other hell coming to the earth. <clears throat> shall the sun be darkened. And the moon should not give her light. That's going into the, the uh, nuclear destruction. Okay. <clears throat> World War 3. Which when you when you read in 2nd Edges 13. Yahweh Shai is returning. During World War 3. And to prove that just real quick. Second Edges chapter 13 and 
begin at verse 29. And all this is good, but starting at 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth by way of his son, Yahweh Shai. Y Yahweh Shai, he is the Savior. He is the Deliverer. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Right, because people are not expecting a so-called black man to come back in a humongous so-called UFO. To what's this, an IFO, all right? People are not expecting that, so he's going to marvel people. They're going to be amazed. They're not expecting that. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, because it's going to be hell on earth. This is that tribulation. One people against another and one realm against another. Right. <clears throat> it says one people against another. World War Three and one realm against another because you're going to have Yahweh Shai and the holy angels fighting against Esau and his angels. Satan and his angels. All right. Tells you that in Revelation 12. But the point is, Yahweh Shai is returning during World War Three. You see that? <clears throat> there it is. OK. So back over here, Matthew chapter 24 and uh, finishing off 29 and the star shall fall from heaven. Those are the nuclear warheads, <clears throat> the nuclear missiles, which have warheads inside of them. All right. There's many warheads inside of those missiles. There's a star falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Right. Which that's the uh, the wicked elite being in uh, being in straits and in, in difficulty. All right. But also, you know, their empire fallen. OK, the powers of the heavens shall be shaken by this destruction. All right. <clears throat> and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. He should come see the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Because they're going to see that huge ship along with other ships. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And it speaks about the clouds of heaven right here. All right. And it's all happening around the same time. Okay. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. <clears throat> and they shall gather together his elect, his chosen of Israel. Only of the Israelites, but the chosen of Israel, the Israel of Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Right. So they're coming to save and also to destroy. When you read this account right here, which brothers always get into. Okay. <clears throat> See, it's something else I want to get. Because the focal point is that the Lord is coming soon. All right. Let's see. This is Psalm chapter 104 and verse 3. Who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make up the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. That's right. Okay, he make up the clouds his chariot. So those are the chariots, those are the vehicles of salvation. Like it tells you in Habakkuk, the vehicles for Israel's salvation, because only Israel can be saved. And at this point in time, it's the elect. So um, <clears throat> let me read this. I'm going to get ready to close this out. I didn't want this to be too long. All right. Psalms chapter 68, verse 34. Ascribe ye strength unto power, Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. His excellency is over Israel. What's his excellency? Those chariots. All right. <clears throat> Those identifiable flying objects. His excellency is over Israel. And his strength is in the clouds. His strength, meaning his power, is in those chariots. And man, they coming to they coming to bring it, man. They gonna bring it. Esau is not ready. Esau in trouble, man. Oh power, thou art terrible 
out of thy holy places. That's the type of power the Lord coming with, man. Terrible power with these chariots. So yeah, they're they're uh, beautiful to look at. You look at them; they may look like um, you know, precious gemstones in the sky with beautiful colors, flashing lights. But they about to bring the pain, man. Okay. <clears throat> to Esau, Edom, and to this world. All right. The God of Israel is He that giveth strength and power unto His people. Blessed be Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Yeah, the Lord gives us strength by way of these scriptures. Okay. And also, when we pray, even though we don't see the angels, the Lord sends his angels to strengthen us, even though we don't see them. All right. But yeah, man, hey, the Lord coming. All right. Let's see what else uh, should I read, man? Which, you know, I basically got the point. <clears throat> but I spoke on the dual purpose of these chariots. Right. And the word dual means two. Two parts or Double, okay, because these uh these chariots they're coming to save, and they're coming to destroy. All right, so <clears throat> bear with me, Bible Kasha. Let's see here. This is James chapter four, <clears throat> James chapter four, verse 12. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? <clears throat> the point is, Yahweh Shai is able to save and to destroy. Okay. <clears throat> That's the power that his heavenly father gave him. Let me read this in uh, <clears throat> Revelation 14. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14 and uh, <clears throat> beginning at verse 14. And I looked and behold, a white cloud, <clears throat> a white cloud was a chariot. And upon the cloud, one sat like this unto the son of man, having owned it's a lot. Having on his head a golden crown and in his in his hand a sharp sickle. Right. So this is Yahweh Shai <coughs> holding a, a sickle. You know what people see the uh, the Grim Reaper hold showing that Yahweh Shai is the Grim Reaper. He's the real Grim Reaper. All right. <coughs> He's holding a sickle, which is used to gather. All right. So that's him delivering. You know, Yahweh Shai coming to deliver. He's coming to gather his elect. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, crying to Yahweh Shai, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe, meaning the elect and <clears throat> the precious fruit of the earth. You know, they're ready to be delivered. And he that sat on the cloud, Yahweh Shai, thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And what is this used to do? And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Fully ripe for what? Destruction. So you see salvation and destruction. You know, the Lord deals with both. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of the heavenly father, <clears throat> which are the laser beams from the chariots and the uh, the nuclear destruction. All right. And that's it. You know, I'll read the, the uh, next verse. And the wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Salvation and destruction. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, our Lord coming, man. All right. You know which um you can read this whole chapter on your own. Second Edges thirteen. You know, 
which I'll read it again for my you know personal use. But um, for right now, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read uh a certain verse for you. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna read verse verse uh twelve. <clears throat> I tell you what, I'll start at verse eleven. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, these are the laser beams, and fell with the violence upon the multitude. And who's that multitude? Now, when you jump up to verse five, it says, and after this, I beheld and lo, there, were, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So these are the armies of the earth. All right. <clears throat> because when you go to Revelation chapter 19. OK, you read Revelation 19 and 19, it says, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. <clears throat> so these different heathen armies coming together to fight against Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai, he's the one sitting on this white horse <clears throat> right here. And in chapter 14, it said a white cloud. All right. But yeah, you read this right here in verse 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, white horse, white chariot. OK, <clears throat> pure power. All right. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness. He doth judge and make war. Let's point on that. But come back over here. <clears throat> All right. Now I was reading <clears throat> verse uh, verse 11. All right. So we know the Lord is going to destroy the armies of the earth. All right. Now, that's the reason why I'm reading this. Now, it says, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which, which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. He made them disappear. But only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. There was a horrible vision. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain. That is, this mountain is also a chariot. So the chariots are called clouds. They're called horses. They're called mountains in certain scriptures. <clears throat> All right. Now it says, and it, well, in particular, this scripture right here is referred to as a mountain. All right. When you read in Daniel, the uh, second chapter is, is referred to as a uh is a stone or a rock. <clears throat> now it says, Af afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and called unto him another peaceable multitude, which is the northern tribes, the northern kingdom. <clears throat> and there came much people unto him. Well, some were glad. These are the Israelites that are glad. Some were sorry, which would, which would uh, be the other nations, Esau and other nations. Some of them were bound. So somebody going to slavery. <clears throat> All right. The Bible deals with balance. You see salvation. You see destruction. And you see slavery. And, and other some brought of them that were offered. Offered as slaves. Okay. Subjugated. Then was I sick through great fear. And I awaked and said. You know, that's the point on that. All right. But the main point of this lesson, what I was getting into was how the Lord is coming with an armada from the heavens, man. You know, the thousands of heaven, as we know, are the clouds of heaven. Like it tells you in this, this uh, revised version. OK, <clears throat> Lord willing, you were edified. Double honor to our elder apostles and our bishops of Great Millstone. Peace and blessed to the hopeful elect. Shalom.